because I mm -hmm. thought all those ideas were amazing and I'm sure that you're all keen to get back to them. And um, with being kind of mid-afternoon, I don't want to create death by PowerPoint. So um, uh, basically, I'm just going to talk to you a little tiny bit about uh, prototyping. Um, I think it was just some, I know that a lot of you know what that is. I know a lot of you have already been doing it really successfully. So I don't want to talk down to anyone. But I do know that it can be a little bit intimidating when someone says, right, you've got 40 hours from an idea and I'll make a prototype for it. And if you don't know what a prototype is, or if your idea is still quite unformed, it can feel like quite a demanding thing for someone to say, come and build something based on that. So um, I just wanted to talk around some of um, Maybe some ideas for rapid prototyping of this kind, so you've, you've maybe got some, something to work from for the rest of this weekend. And so just a few key points. One of them is it's kind of the back of the napkin mentality. It's quick, it's simple, it's one idea or one question communicated through the prototype, and it's using whatever you've got around. So it's kind of that thing of you come up with an idea when you're out and about, or you're in a pub or in a coffee shop, and you just write it down and you maybe brainstorm and you use whatever's around to kind of explore that idea. The second point is that it can really act as a catalyst. If you don't quite, I mean we've all been in sort of workshops or meetings where you're talking around an idea and you're talking around it and no progress is being made and you get really frustrated and everyone's motivation goes right down. It can be really helpful to just pick something and build something to do with it. And that can really be a catalyst for action. It really is about doing not talking. Um, and you really don't know if something's going to work until you've got something physical that you've made, and then you can start getting feedback on that and seeing really if there's any interest in what you're developing. Um, and the third point that is, I quite like is uh, be crappy. Don't get intimidated by, I mean, all your ideas are great, but don't be afraid of making a crappy prototype. If you don't know what you're doing, just grab whatever's around you. It doesn't need to be high tech, it just certainly can't be polished in the amount of time that you've got. So just get some card, throw some bits together. And we've just got a little bit of an example of a really simple prototype that might give you some ideas of how you could do it. prototype but it really effectively communicates what it is it's just a piece of card but if you went to someone and said oh what would you think about kind of a dancing app on your phone and like people like the app the word app is used so much and people might be well yeah you know it's cool and you know kids might like it I suppose but particularly since they're talking about children having that having sort of this is how it works this is you touch it and it's really fun people get really excited about that so that's an example of a crappy prototype and this is another example of a crappy prototype this is the crappy prototype that we developed as part of our um, working process last year at the Newcastle Jam. This is Alan, who's uh, showing us. Our idea was both um, a digital app and website um, that connected to um, touch screen boards around an area so that um, people who are going by could you know, ref reflect on the area around them, go and see other people's memories, things they'd uploaded, whether it's memories or reflections or stories of things I used to think of things I used to be in that area. Um, and we obviously couldn't get that. We couldn't create a touch screen board in 48 hours. So we got a couple pieces of cardboard and a really long roll of paper and we sort of scrolled along so you could kind of like if you, as you swipe the screen, you go from a map to some in, to some images or some memories and something like that. And it really um, starts conversation. Um, this is kind of family were walking along that area and we started talking to them. And through having this, we could just describe what we were doing so much better than if we were, you know, just 
you know, I've got an idea for this, and this is kind of how it would work. And particularly when you're kind of working with um, children as well, it's really open and inclusive. Often if you're developing something that might be for a certain audience, they might not be the type of group or type of person who would take part in a focus group or, you know, a data collection exercise. But if you can show them this is how it works, they get really excited about it, or they maybe think, no, that's terrible, you know, that wouldn't work at all. But the fact is it really engages them in a way that just talking can't. This is another example from ours, and this is kind of a data point around the city, kind of giving some information on a uh, piece of street art. So, and again, it's, as we were doing this, people were coming up to us and asking us about it, and developing a prototype is a way of inspiring yourself and keeping the motivation up in your group and inspiring others. And this is an example from kind of, we were just playing around with bits that we had, and this is a QR box, so people would see that, scan it, and then be taken to the website, so they could then maybe take a photo and upload that, or record something and upload that. And as, as I was kind of taking this little picture, which is quite a, a neat, fun way of um, describing the, the fun nature of the app that we were proposing, and the service that we were developing, people were coming along saying, oh, that's great, and I love that photo, and what's this for? So it's, uh, it's really an example of having fun, like this event, it's, this, it's not, this isn't, as you've figured out, it's not a conference, it's not, you know, a transdisciplinary workshop where people come together and, you know, you really try and address a problem and come out with a load of definite outputs. Um, and I guess I don't need to tell you that because you've obviously been getting well into the spirit of it, so you've got, even the chickens have been having a bit of a Skype, so I think we've all kind of got the theme of things for the, for the week, so that is just a brief introduction on prototyping. Please don't be scared of developing something. Just grab some things off that table and have a go. Um, we will be now designing our first prototype. Our next check-in is at 5, I think. So we'll be 5.30. Yeah. So <coughs> our stage report's at 5. I don't know if that'll get pushed back at all. But again, just another quick check of what you've been doing. If you can just, just talk us through what you've been making, we can ask questions about that. And then we have another one at 8, I think. And just to keep your energy up and your motivation going, we'll be having pizza at seven. So this is a picture, funnily enough, a picture from last year. This is how I spent my Saturday night in uh, the Newcastle service jam. So hopefully that will um, keep you going. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening. And go away and make things. Great.